scripts and producers Richard Power and Phil the Collector's Worm. Sound of the Sixes has been a seven digital production for BBC Radio 2. for another Sounds for Sixes. Dermot and Leary coming up next after the news. From me, Tony Blackburn, have a lovely weekend. And all those of you in Scotland, enjoy your uh, bank holiday, won't you? See you soon. This is Radio 2 on BBC Sounds app, on digital radio, and on 88 to 91 FM. Bye-bye. BBC News at 8 o'clock on Saturday, the 3rd of August. Good morning, this is Catherine Cracknell. People in Whaley Bridge are being allowed to briefly return to their homes as rescue teams work to stop a dam from failing and flooding the town. The Home Secretary says she wants criminals to feel terror at the thought of committing an offence. And a woman smashes the record for running the length of the UK. Engineers have spent the night pumping thousands of gallons of water from the Toddbrook Reservoir in Derbyshire, which is threatening to burst through a dam and flood the town beneath it. Attempts have been made to shore up the dam at Whaley Bridge, which was damaged on Thursday. Some residents who've had to leave their homes are being allowed to return for 15 minutes to collect some belongings and rescue their pets. Professor Tim Broyd from University College London said the changing global climate was raising questions about whether the dam and other similar structures were still fit for purpose. What we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years in the UK and of course elsewhere in the world is that weather events are becoming more extreme which potentially then are taking the, this engineered structure like, like uh, the dam at uh, Todbrook beyond its design limit. The new Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has said she wants criminals to literally feel terror at the thought of breaking the law. In her first interview since being given the role in Boris Johnson's reshuffle, she also said she wanted to empower the police and distanced herself from past comments she made in support of the death penalty. 
The telecommunications industry says the Prime Minister will have to take fast and far-reaching action if his promise to deliver full fibre broadband years ahead of schedule is to be met. Three trade bodies have sent Boris Johnson a letter saying they'll need help to deliver on that pledge. An industry analyst, Fiona Vanier, says it will be difficult to get things moving quickly enough. The main measure, that being um, planning access, access to buildings, access to private property, access to land. I don't think that that is going to be achievable in 12 months. That is going to require a very carefully worded piece of legislation. Last-ditch talks are to take place to try to avert a two-day strike by thousands of staff at Heathrow Airport, which is due to start on Monday. Security guards, firefighters and engineers have rejected a revised pay offer. 172 flights have already been cancelled on Monday and Tuesday. The local government association is warning of the dangers of so-called tombstoning during the school summer holidays. It says it's seen a surge in young people jumping off high bridges, cliffs and harbour walls, putting themselves in danger of death or serious injury. Councillor Peter Fleming is a deputy chairman at the LGA. People need to be aware of both the risks uh, of tombstoning, perhaps those risks that they might be aware of, not knowing how deep the water is or what might be in the water, hidden rocks or strong currents and then some of the less well-known issues which are things like cold water shock which can really affect breathing and movement even amongst really strong and confident swimmers. Labour's criticised the government for offering £20 million of already announced funding to help councils prepare for Brexit. The government said the sum to be shared between England's 353 local authorities would ensure they were ready for Britain's departure from the EU at the end of October. The local government association said councils faced information and advice gaps on top of a funding shortfall of £3 billion. President Trump says he's still deciding who to appoint as the new U.S. Director of National Intelligence after his first choice withdrew his nomination. Mr. Trump said the Republican congressman, John Ratcliffe, had pulled out rather than face months of slander and libel. From Washington, Chris Buckler reports. John Ratcliffe was seen as a Trump loyalist who had impressed the president with his aggressive questioning of the former special counsel Robert Mueller during a recent congressional hearing. However, there had been questions about whether he had the experience to oversee America's 17 military and civilian intelligence agencies. President Trump said he believed Mr. Radcliffe had been treated very unfairly by the media, but that he respected his decision to withdraw his name. A 55-year-old ultra runner has become the fastest woman to travel by foot between John O'Groats and Land's End. Sharon Gator covered the 822-mile route in 12 days, 11 hours, 6 minutes and 7 seconds, beating the previous record by more than 4 hours. After completing the fundraising challenge for the mental health charity Mind, the Teesside University lecturer said she planned to be back at work at 9am on Monday morning. And the weather warm, sunny spells for most of the country today with a few showers in the north and west, some of which could be heavy. Cloudier in Northern Ireland with some patchy rain. Temperatures could reach 25 Celsius in London, 23 in Cardiff and Glasgow, and 20 in Belfast. And that's the BBC News at five past eight. Thank you. Now, Saturday Breakfast with Dermot O'Leary. Morning, morning, morning. Hope you're all good. Enough of this.